Welcome back star family to the matrix oracle. This is another pick a card reading this time in honor of the sun entering Scorpio. So the energy for this vintage 2024 and Scorpio season is all about the mirror of the soul. This actually came through as I was meditating, realizing that most of the time I was focused on how the energy was emanating out from the body, working with the expression of the aura and its shape, only to realize how those multi-layers of body on the outside of the auric field were actually reflection of the world within, inside the deeper and deeper layers of body. And it just like like hit me as far as like, whoa, can you imagine like when I see auras, I, I, I tap into a certain expression and kind of seeing how the work was really also happening inward into the body and how deep. It just reminded me of certain experiences in life where we really have to dig deep. So this is pick, pick a card that is going to be about those messages from the mirror of your soul. Things that want to be revealed from the inside out. Especially with Scorpio, there's a lot between the unseen and the seen, the subconscious and the conscious, the dark and the light. Um, I would suggest for this reading, if you like to choose according to zodiac placement, to choose, oh, there we go, to choose your sun sign, okay? So we're going to pick the cards for the piles and yeah, interesting. I feel like I want to use the dreams of God. Maybe not. Two cards? Okay, this one did not want to come with me. So there might be two cards here. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. Pile one, you're going to have a card with Isis. Pile number two, we're going to have a card with <laughs> the dreams of Gaia. Okay, we're going to read this one. This is the Nine of Cups. This is the message that talks about truth unveiled. There are times when appearances and people, places, and things are deceptive. You will sense this when something feels uncomfortable within you, when you notice feelings of anxiety or doubts within you, you may think there is something wrong with you, but actually you are intuitively sensing that all is not as it appears to be. Trust what you feel, not what appears to be. So pile number one, you have this, the nine of water or nine of cups. And pile number three, okay, you'll have... Ooh, the rhythm of my breath directs the rhythm of my life. Okay, so three different cars, three different decks. And for the Zodiac sign, I feel like I need to roll up my sleeves. Oh, do we have like some work ahead <laughs> with this season? Roll up my sleeves, some of you. If you are part of the Star Seed Rise Up Star Family, you will find the Cosmic Alignment Energy Session already available to you. I got to tell you, it was a little bit shocking to me when I did the session at the end, when I'm receiving, not doing the, the frequency alignment, uh, an injury when I fell off a horse, an injury uh, to my head starting being reactivated, which was showing me how this accident with this particular hit to the head was very much connected to the remembrance of my light, remembrance of my soul's purpose, but was part of mirroring the how deep of a work I had to commit to in this lifetime. Because there was, you know, through those accidents and but especially this was the first major accident and it kind of uh, you know kind of got me to start to dig deep into the self. So something here for some of you as far as if you want to join me into those cosmic energy session, 
to support your activations and some of those messages. Note that it is part of uh, what I described in this video. All right, pile number one, we have Leo. We have Pisces. We have Gemini. And we have Virgo. Pile number two, we have Libra. We have Cancer. We have Scorpio. And we have Capricorn. Okay. And pile number three, we have Aries. Aquarius, Taurus, and Sagittarius. All right, my dear ones, pick your pile. You can pick according to your zodiac sun sign. That's what I would suggest because this is a sun reading, okay, in honor of Scorpio season 2024. Let's rock and roll. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to those messages. This is a reading in honor of Scorpio season. So the sun moving into Scorpio for vintage 2024. Those are messages from the mirror of your soul. So it was inspired by this vision that I had meditating where I was seeing how the aura of the body, you know, how we perceive people's reflection and how we're seeing colors and shapes on the outside if we were tuned to it. This was actually also occurring inside. And the more we were tapping into the deeper layers of body within, the more we were able to affect the auric um, expression and reflection, the light, you know, how we shine through or shine outward uh, in that energy or in the auric field. So I do not have any expectations <laughs> about this uh, reading and pick a card. This could be chosen according to your sun sign, Leo, Pisces, Gemini, and Virgo for this pile. We're going to move this aside because we have here Mother Isis that is speaking of truths being unveiled. There are times when appearances of people, places, and things are deceptive. You will sense this when something feels uncomfortable within you, when you notice feelings of anxiety or doubts within you. You may think there is something wrong with you, but actually you are intuitively sensing that all is not as it appears to be. Trust what you feel, not what appears to be. So here, this pile number one, the mirror of your soul is already seeing and saying and seeing. Okay, interesting. You know, watch how you um, jump into conclusion about how you feel and right away associating it to you labeling it as yours, okay? We're going to see how in this Scorpio season, there's going to be a guidance here for you to get out of this pattern of maybe automatically taking things personally. You know, I feel that this is like, you know, kind of not being able to dissociate what's yours and what's not. Okay, so let's see. Very interesting messages. Um, okay, all right. Wait a second, I'm seeing something in my mind's eye. Okay. And you know what I was seeing, pile number one? It was almost like, imagine you're looking in a pond or a river, or like this reflection that when we're looking at ourselves in this water, it doesn't, the way the light refracts and, re, you know, reflects it is not accurate. So there's something here with, you know, having two sides of the water, okay, that we need to address. Okay, life supports me. Great. And I can release the past and forgive everyone. This is interesting, especially as this flower feels very much like a womb, okay? Uh, the Cosmic Energy Session, we actually were working with the psoas, opening up the... what The, the psoas is 
called the muscle of the soul. So I do have a frequency and I'm going to list it in the video description for the psoas healing. Okay, that's probably going to be for everyone, but especially you, pile number one. I feel there is something here as far as um, maybe even in your chart, especially if you have first house placement, if you have any planets in the first house, any muse, any uh, goddess energy. Some of you, you know, I work with goddesses and the muses of astrology. There are nine of them and they're activating your chart. They're helping you to stay inspired and activate your sacred feminine energy. And I feel like here with life supports me, you see how it's interesting I was saying about life force and working with your energy. There's something here about maybe energy vampires being drained. And here with this mirror effect, we're going to figure out something for you. I did not expect this. There's more that's going to come here. I'm not sure. Oh, I know. I already know. You know... Pile number one, before we even look, I actually feel that you are highly intuitive and you know a lot of the higher truths, but I feel a tendency to override your personal guidance. And I will tell you, if you have experienced any narcissistic relationships or dynamics, whether it's through parents through romantic relationship or any type of that sort, there is a pattern that one can develop, which is becoming your own gaslighter. You become and you develop your own <laughs> narcissist, narc inside of you. Like your intuition will try to tell you something through your body, through your anxiety, through your feelings, and then a voice will come and intervene and act as the voices of all those negative relationships and kind of make you doubt. So I feel that there's something here. If that's the case, pile number one, I'm going to list again down below uh, my super empath playlist, okay, super empath, I developed this for myself, that was the first album, I call them albums, you know, like healing, they're albums for the same theme, for becoming a super empath, for believing and not overriding your inner reaction, your inner guidance, that was uh, something I needed, I like, like oxygen, okay, so some of you, uh, I, I listened to this, for six months, I was falling asleep to this. And finally, I found some, I found back some strength, you know, in my personal uh, guidance, in my, per instead of seeing how I was always doubting myself again and again, overriding. And I would always come back to the conclusion that I was trying to override. But you see, there was a loss of energy, okay? And with life supports me, I feel this message from the mirror of your soul. It's saying, stop overriding me. You pick up intuitively on those truths. Trust them. And we're going to get some guidance for you to stay empowered in those moments. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Oh my gosh. I cannot. Look at the image of this. Look at the image Oof, I get chills everywhere. How you reverb out and how people see you is a mirror of your inner world. But that, as much as this goes out and seen from the outside of other, to others, the mirror of your soul is going more inward. Okay? So, there is something here. You see how there's another flower there's a recalibration. Some of you, if you are part of the YouTube star family, all levels, there is a womb heart recalibration, especially for this, because what happens, you create from your womb. And sometimes there's distortions that occur when you start overriding your own guidance. You start creating something that are most based 
on other people's desires and their heart's desire. So this recalibration helps with making sure that you follow your heart and not the desire to please others and their heart's desire. So I'm going to put this uh, womb heart recalibration for you. Wow, wow, wow. I'm mind blown. I am mind blown. Okay, let's see here. I mean, yeah, okay. I feel like I already did the whole reading without looking at the cards. My inner compass knows the way. Pile number one. I have great news for you. This Scorpio season, you are going to get rid of the part of you that used to override itself. Such great news. You're going to realize that the past attraction, how people were attracted to your aura, was a reflection of how maybe you doubted yourself, you overrid yourself because of whatever was your experience. Okay? That I can feel that this group is really in this very crucial time when they're becoming masters, master of their emotion, of their mind, and supporting and making sure they're choosing and making certain decisions based on things that supports them and not others, okay? There's a lot of flowers. There's a lot of flowers. I wouldn't be surprised that some of you had to go round and round in certain cycles, in certain repetitions in order to get to that level, okay? That level of mastery. Now, let me also explain to you because there's a lot of flowers. When I work with Kundalini energy and people that work with Kundalini, aka life force, your life energy, what gives you and supports life, which is your connection to source. But when you mix this type of, you know, understanding with breath work and stretches and all this, and you Im involve and implement astrology, they are, they are, association of chakra with certain zodiac placement and what's interesting is that each so the zodiac placement here and uh, the, the planets we have at the root i feel like you need to hear this i don't know some of you maybe you're advanced or your people that want to understand those things at the root we have saturn and uranus okay that's capricorn and aquarius and we're moving up, we have Jupiter and Neptune, that's Sagittarius and Pisces. Then we're moving up, we have Mars and Pluto, that's Aries and Scorpio. Okay, so here we're working with the solar plexus, bringing light, so the sun's energy into the solar plexus, so we stop doubting ourselves. I feel like this is where I was going, not knowing I was doing this with you. Okay, now we're moving to the heart, Okay, this is Venus energy and we have Libra and Taurus. Then we're moving to the throat. This is Mercury and we have Gemini and Virgo. Then we're moving to the third eye and we have at the third eye, the moon and the sun. And that's Leo and Cancer. Now, when we get to the crown, there's no association to planets or zodiac archetype. Why? Because as you allow this energy to rise and rise, this gives birth to a very specific flower that is yours. And this is also why when we have those experiences of being reborn, death and rebirth, death and rebirth, it's just like when you're watching, I don't know if some of you ever had gardens or if you see some flowers. This year I've had roses, so I've been able to observe them. They're reborn. They're reborn. And that's what you do when you renew your sense of self. Okay. And when you work with astrology, you tap into this process of knowing yourself, of following the rhythm of getting to know yourself in alignment with the collective, you know, uh, movement and how it impacts you. Okay. And this is why I usually give guidance, even in the pick a card to look at certain zodiac placement, because this will help you navigate this a little further. So what it's showing here, okay, is what we said about making sure you make decisions based off your first feeling. 
and not overriding that feeling. Now, what that feeling means, you're going to have to sit with it and not take it as immediately yours, but not overriding the fact that it's there. It's there. And usually I will tell you now all of a sudden as talking to you, pile number one, I am remembering when I use my super empath. The first thing that I started to do that came through as, you know, a guidance when I meditated with those or when I was just putting them in the background, I would feel certain things. And my first instinct was, is it yours or is it not yours? Like I was asking myself, Audrey, this is yours or not? And it's like it, intuitively, I could right away tell, this will not fail you. Even if you don't know where that's from, because sometimes, believe me, especially with the womb energy, I could actually pick up on family members thinking about me. And I would get confirmation, like I would receive a text an hour later, or I would receive correspondence. So some of you here with that pile number one, you are highly, highly intuitive and you need to honor this. And this is what the mirror of your soul wants to tell you. It's like you're all knowing, you're all encompassing knowing that lives inside of you and that wants to support you. Okay. You just have certain uh, mechanism, patterns, uh, you know, matrix, matrices that got implemented because of your life experience. So let's see if we are getting more of that experience here and being revealed. We have, I trust the mystery of life. And, 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 and healthy boundaries keep me centered and balanced. You see, is it mine? Or is it not? And some of you, it could be also, is it mine? Or is it something that is being activated in my chart? This is why I like to, you know, do the cosmic weather forecast where I talk about the sacred dance between the sun and the moon. Because this supports us collectively to know what type of collective uh, lessons and goals and intentions we're trying to set. Okay, so there we have some deep guidance that you need to ask yourself, is it me? Is it someone else? Is it in the collective? Is it something that I'm being guided to understand? Or I would say for you to understand, to when you sit with that feeling, it will tell you. You know, it's so funny. I got to tell you, pile number one, I'm still feeling the effect of my cosmic alignment and I feel that's something for you that I have to share. It's like my body remembered an accident when I did this cosmic um, alignment and it's like this, this, this is a guidance for you to make sure that you remember, you remember, you allow your body to remember certain things. So it could be that other people reactivate in you through their presence, through their beliefs, through their pattern, something that you experienced, okay? And that could be a body activation. So let's see how that unfolds, okay? With this forgiveness, I feel that there was some messages here. Okay. All right, we have this one. Oh, wow. Look at this. We have Horus in the back. Very much activation of the third eye. Hmm. Look, it's, it speaks of here of initiation. When you are being initiated into the divine mysteries of light, love, and power, there are moments of profound challenge. The key is to find the light within the challenge the opportunity for growth that can transform any challenge into an experience of healing. With compassion and cleverness, you will not burn during your challenges. You shall thrive. Okay, so there, there is in and through Scorpio season for you pile number one. The mirror of your soul wants to teach you. It wants to initiate you to the art of 
being open to receive the energies that are surrounding you, but not systematically uh, bringing them as yours. Kind of having that um, MO, I'm hearing, mode of operation where you allow and you trust why life would bring this feeling, would bring this person, would bring this opportunity, would bring this event into your life, but take it as something that is initiating you into the, um, the mastery, emotional mastery of your empathy, okay? I really feel this card here on top where it talks about, oh, ancient power mysteries. The oracle guides you to honor the power of your voice, whether through spoken or sung words, or through what you write, speak, or stand for, symbolically. You have a potentially very powerful healing voice, and you are guided to recognize the responsibility that you have for what you proclaim through your voice, which is interesting because remember the first step that I share with you is that ask yourself, is it mine? Is it part of my alignment with source? And if it's showing up and it's not mine, it has a purpose. It has a purpose maybe to teach you greater boundaries. It has a purpose maybe to teach you more about developing something inside of yourself, making sure that you're understanding your own patterns. Very deep, deep. Um, you know, I'm not surprised. This is Scorpio season. This is putting the energy of the sun on an archetype that is connected to the kidney meridian. The kidney meridian is all about, uh, you know, removing and transcending the fears, transcending the traumas, transcending the anxiety, transcending uh, especially things that would make us back down instead of moving forward, okay? And I feel that part of this message is that the mirror of your soul says that we are rehearsing and initiating you, my dear pile number one, to have confidence, courage in your momentum forward, okay? When I was, and we're going to see what's coming next, okay? Because there's something coming next. When I chose this deck, you know, it works with the subconscious. It works with the mirror of your soul. It works with the deep parts of yourself. I the, the card from the deck while I was getting ready of abundance came forward. And I was like, wow, is that related to the, the pile? And it was showing me that the soul, that mirror has so much abundance and it wants to express itself. It's almost like something from below the waters, the murky waters, wants to be pulled out, wants to be brought to the light, okay? There's a lot of depth into this archetype, into this meridian, into its teaching. Oh, wow. So once you finally bring out and to the surface anything that could have caused fear or overridence of your overridens I don't know I'm sorry not first language I don't care <laughs> I just make up words <laughs> the overridence of your guidance <laughs> but once you are able to master this look at this okay there is the king of earth and the maiden the maiden with the number two is the high priestess you're going to be so, there's going to be an abundance in you being able to follow the uncharted, the unknown path, okay? And you see how it almost creates a mirror effect? You see how she could be entering the other side, a little bit like Alice in Wonderland? You're going to be able to access pile number one with more ease, the depth of your inner world, the mirror of what's going on. And, and that means like when you access the mirror, you're able to understand why things are coming your way, why things are teaching you certain patterns. And I feel like this is going to really soothe a part of yourself, soothe a part of your soul, but also empower it, really. 
That's what I have for you, pile number one, as messages from the mirror of your soul. I'm sending you many blessings, much love and light. And remember to like those videos if it supported you. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your messages. This is all about the mirror of your soul. There's something here through Scorpio season that wants to be revealed to you. This is you know, an energy that came forward as I was meditating and realizing how our aura and how we attracted things in life was coming from the layers outside of the body, but how this was also reflected in the inner layers of body. And I was like, wow, can you imagine the deeper you go within, the more you have access to the light you emanate and I was just like mind blown. So some of you, if you are interested in receiving the cosmic alignment energy session, this is going to be listed below. I will also add all the frequencies I recommend uh, that are coming up. Scorpio archetype, okay, we have it here, is very deep. It will deep dive inside the waters to pull out to the surface, especially with the energy of the sun. It brings it to the surface. Some of the things that are unknown. And there's something about the mirror effect, okay? Whatever, it, whatever is going in your life and whatever is going on inside your inner life and your outer life that is um, wanting to communicate with you, okay? If you chose according to zodiac archetype, I would suggest your sun placement. We have a Libra, Capricorn, Cancer, and Scorpio. I'm going to put this aside. So we're starting here with the nine of waters, nine of cups energy, beautiful energy. Energy of, especially in this deck, of allowing the flow of love, of gratitude to bless us. There's something maybe through Scorpio season, I wouldn't be surprised, especially we have Scorpio that's there, some blessings, some light codes, some receptivity of certain gifts, okay, that are coming through, and we're going to deep dive in this. Okay, let's see what we have for you. My dear pile number two, messages from the mirror of your soul. Oh, wow. Interesting. All right. Beautiful. We're going straight to healing. Okay. Oh, same as pile number... Ooh, as <laughs> pile... Number one, some of you, if you hesitated and you want both messages, okay, it is safe to look within and life supports me, okay, and then we're going to get some more about this. I am in the process of positive change, beautiful, okay, and... I let go of all expectations. Beautiful. Okay, I'm getting a lot of information already for you. Okay, so right away, my dear pile number two, mirror of your soul. There's already something that is being mirrored. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised here that some of you, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> Some of you, if you've ever experienced competition, jealousy, envy, this was actually a part of you within that was not answering the call. It's almost like I'm seeing something I had never seen for the life of me. Oh, this is so weird, you guys. All right, let me see if I can explain this right. It's almost as if your physical body here, okay, and the outside. You would experience, you know, jealousy, competition, feeling maybe you're not good enough or whatever, which would be in return some type of, 
I would say, call yearning that is trying to communicate with you. And it is trying to ask you to aim higher, asking you to, you know, instead of, you know, competition, it's almost like there's no need to compare because what you have inside is uniquely yours. It's almost like that every time you're experiencing this in your life, remember it. Now that you heard this message, it's actually a call to look within. When you feel envious or when you feel jealous or people feel this way towards you, okay? And usually we might not be aware if people feel this, but if you are made aware that this is happening, this is because inside of you, if you see outside, inside, there is with the purple, there is a communication with the divine that's calling you in. <gasps> okay. Pile number two, I really feel that's something that you needed to hear. Especially some of you, I feel that you could have experienced, I don't know why I'm seeing this with the two, um, feeling that you're option number two, that you're not number one in someone's life. And that would be not putting yourself and your connection to source before any other connection. You could be someone that has seventh house energy placement. Why do I say this? Because seventh house is a house of relationship. And when you work with esoteric, so hidden astrology, uh, which works more with the embodiment of your sacred self, this is a relationship between the lower self and the higher self. And in this case, the physical self and the deep body, energy body within that is in pure connection with source energy. Okay, so I feel that this is so important for you that every time also a door could close or had closed or was closed or whatever was the experience or whether it happens now, happened in the past or happens in the future. Know that every door that closes is actually something greater that is meant for you to reach towards. And you don't have to work harder. You have to trust that the universe is bringing you something greater. I feel this is something um, that works a lot in alignment with the let go of expectations. This is something I had to rehearse, um, you know, as far as uh, looking for certain opportunities. At some point, I was doing a lot of traveling and I was house sitting. And when I was doing this, I was obviously submitting, you know, my um, offer to stay at people's home and, and do the, the sitting and everything. And I would, you know, sometimes feel like, oh my God, I love this dog. I would love to visit this place. That would be great. And then I would sometimes feel disappointed if that was not a match. Now, while I was doing this, I started to develop this habit. Whenever I was getting very excited and things didn't work out, I would catch myself right away and say, oh my God, can you imagine if this that got me so excited did not work? What the thing that will work, how much greater it will be. So I started like piggybacking on how great I felt about my opportunities and things that could be, but not a touch of it being the ultimate you know, so that's something that I want to share with you because I feel that for you, pile number two, the mirror of your soul is saying that when certain doors close, when certain things don't seem to match your energy or seem to be like there's, you know, when you envy, it's something that you really want, but it's really something that inside of you, you already have. And that wants to be cherished, that wants to be developed, that wants to be grown. You know, I remember for me, you know, to reach a certain level on social media, it took me 10 years. Some people will just go and, and, and look at it and think that it happened overnight. 
I had started even before I was uh, doing, um, you know, astrology or spirituality. I was doing different things. I was more on, you know, the health, the detox, the body, um, the, the physical training. But I was, this was something that was calling me in, you know, and to have that calling when I was looking out, was like, how do people do this? How do they reach people? How do they reach others? I had to really reach inside of myself. I had to reach deep down. And that's what I feel for you. Pile number two, this Scorpio season and what the mirror of your soul is saying. Whenever you feel that something is not matching your expectations or you're envying or people are envying or there's some type of reverb like this, know that there is change that is occurring that is asking you to deep dive within with this energy here with the positive change but especially because i see the scissors this is my symbol for ending karmic contracts okay some of you i would say you're just on the continuation of uh, we had a solar eclipse uh in libra through libra season obviously there is a teaching here on how to end certain patterns. And I feel for you, it may be disappointment. It may also be, because this is the two of wands. The two of wands is about planning, organization. Some of you, I could feel that maybe you are very organized and sometimes you're not. And it could this disorganization could come through how you feel about yourself in comparison to others. And feeling that maybe you have to do things differently. It's actually going to be a very strong reflection when you feel organized. That means you put yourself first. So that's the strong message for you. Uh, pile number two, make sure you put your connection to source first. This is going to create a great momentum forward, great healing, okay, in the for the month that's ahead for you okay so let's see now with those cards here the mother isis oracle there's a lot of healing of the womb that wants to come forward when especially when isis comes into uh the mix and you'll see in the description box below i'm going to be listing the psoas healing and some of you if you are part of the youtube soul tribe uh, the womb heart recalibration because you want to make sure that you're creating from your heart you see those two hands are from the heart you everything that you see outside that you want that you desire you already have within but you might have to deep dive that's that's a call within every time you see yourself look outside and say oh i would love this oh i would love to have this and it's, it's calling you because it's something that your soul is meant to develop, your soul is meant to access, your soul is meant to um, manifest. Okay, interesting. We have the lunar queen here. There is a deep feminine wisdom that recognizes the importance of cycles of rest and replenishment as essential to balance our actions of power and demonstration. You are asked to allow this replenishment for yourself now, trusting that you are in a cycle of creation that is about to shift into a new phase. Change. Release and enjoy the process without having to control or force it. Some of you, you know I uh, connect to the sacred dance of the sun and the moon. That's something that I find very deep because it's connected to the third eye. When you work with the third eye, especially the moon, is this high priestess energy. It goes round and round and it unveils. I really feel, pile number two, there could be some strong messages just because of the words I'm using from pile number one. So if you hesitated or maybe if your moon sign was in pile number one, hmm... There might be another message for you, okay? There's something about the changes you can expect or the changes that you can make or the truth that you're going to unveil that could be in your moon placement. Go and check out uh, at the beginning uh, what the zodiac signs are. 
Now, we have divine sisterhood. A lot of sisters here, a lot of relationships are coming at play. Letting the divine feminine nourish you now into new relationships, collaborations, community and friendships is very wise. There are many souls with whom you have spiritual contracts and decided upon before you were born who wish to help you and whom you can help too as you grow together in peace and light and wisdom. So a lot of feminine guidance for you through this uh, Scorpio season. And when we refer to the deep feminine, this is the dark feminine, this is the unknown, this is, uh, you know, the absence of light, because you're the light, you're the one that is sparking up the light within. Okay, and that is almost like an effort to, from the outside, bringing your focus in to reconnect with that light that's already there. Okay, but when you reach into the depth of certain aspect of yourself, and I don't know why, but I'm seeing the waters glow just like the stars are, even though it's light here, but it looks like the sky in this water. There's a connection, probably some of you, to your astrology, to wherever this is occurring in your chart that might be triggering also with the frog, a decluttering. The frog it declutters, but also is a sign of fortune. So when you make the space, there's good fortune that is coming. There's some shedding of the skin. There's some soul medicine. There's probably through this process, access to your own soul's medicine. Some of you, you might be very shamanic at a soul level. You might have a certain access to knowledge and it's calling you within. Look at this. You're receiving a lot of activation from the outside and a lot inside is going on. Pile number two, I want to share this with you because it came up uh, through the week of the shift into your season here with Scorpio season. I call the breathing that follows the Fibonacci ratio, vortex breathing. It connects you to your heart. The pattern is one inhale, one excel, two inhales, two excels, three inhales, three excels, five, five, eight, Eight. And if you can go beyond this 13, 21, you can look at the pattern of this uh, Fibonacci uh, sequence and you can just start with one and one, two, two and three, three and then drop back down to one. What I found was unbelievable practicing this breath, okay? Um, with a frequency I'm going to list for you, uh, which I recommended for this week. And it's the law of attraction, the law of attraction, um, where we're releasing all the things that are not, we're just, we're just concerned about attracting things that are meant for us and not things that we feel we need to create for pleasing others, for pleasing our parents, for pleasing the public, for pleasing society, just things that are in alignment with our own heart, okay? What I found rehearsing this was that I could not focus on any negative pattern because there was such, it's almost like it was so empty and yet so full. It felt like I was connecting to the energy of love. And I'm not surprised because the pattern of uh, the heart is a vortex. This creates a vortex. So you're creating this through just the breath. Okay. Some of you, if you want to use a uh, mudra, which is symbol with your hands, you can use all three fingers with the thumb and extend the pinky. This is called Hansi, H-A-N-C, uh, H-A-N-S-I. And it's the water element that's open. And that's a mudra that you can use for self-love. There's something about you when you're bringing back your energy to yourself that will shine and reveal to you a lot of maybe the old uh, karmic contracts, but how to 
be on your way, be on your highest way, be on the, the path that is meant for you, was always there for you. Okay, so let's deep dive a little bit more here and then we'll be done. Once pile number two is accessing this part of their soul, this deep mirror of their soul, this deep energy, spiritual body within, what can they expect for this season? We have, I love myself completely and unconditionally. You see how she's emerging out of this lotus flower, which is in the murky waters. This self-love, a lot of self-love. Oh, and I meet resistance with kindness. You see how there's just a renewal. I really feel a renewal here for some of you. Some of you, if you have access to the YouTube frequencies for all layers and levels of membership, I would suggest working with the void as well, okay? The void would be great for you, pile number two. The void, the law of attraction, the vortex breathing with this mudra, there's a lot that you're going to understand, but really more understand, understand as far as what you're meant to create, what part of yourself you're supposed to express. It's almost like meeting, meeting another you. And as a result, you're going to meet people that are part of you meeting yourself and them meeting themselves. You know, those, those moments when you meet souls that feel like you've known them always, forever. Um, and there's going to be this reverb back. And I feel that some of you, maybe that was not the case in the past. And this is going to feel like a great change and a positive change and a great reward. So that's what I have for you, my dear pile number two. It was interesting. It was just 2121 on my little recording timestamp here. Might be um, a number that is significant through this phase. I'm sending you many blessings. And if you like this video and those messages, please support the channel with your thumbs up. Thank you so very much. Namaste. Hi, pile number three. Let's get some messages from the mirror of your soul. So this came up from meditating with the archetype of Scorpio as I was seeing how the aura and the layers of the multidimensional body was also reflected outward but inward. And the more we wanted to work on how we shone our light, we had to deep dive more within. Not surprising for transit where uh, we're channeling messages for the sun moving into Scorpio. Um, something that came up and that came up for the pile with Scorpio archetype is the suggestion to look at the messages for your sun placement and your moon placement. So here we have Aries, Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Taurus. You chose the pile... <clears throat> the rhythm of my breath directs the rhythm of my life. So let's see what we have here. Interesting uh, background with, if I'm not mistaken, purple mountains. I always feel like the mountain energy is very much connected to the ether element. There's something about the magic of that scenery or uh, something about your soul being mirrored in nature for you, pile number three. There's a strong reverb that I feel with your surrounding. Okay, so let's see where that is going. Because <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, so let's channel for pile number three some messages from the mirror of their soul. Mirror of your soul. Oop. Okay. All right. And it's been, <laughs> the setting for those messages has been very different. Let me see if I can give you a little bit more space. Okay. All right. I am willing to let go. I release others to experience whatever is meaningful to them. 
and I am free to create that which is meaningful to me. This is interesting because I mentioned something about your surrounding here. Let's see, because it fell just under this card, my dear pile number three. I forgive and let go with loving ease. A lot of letting go through uh, Scorpio season here for you. There are a lot of, uh, you know, it, okay. I want you to um, know something as far as working with your life force. You see all this purple. Purple is connected to your crown. Now, when you're working with astrology and kundalini, you're working with 12 archetypes. They're all related. So two to the root, two to um, your uh, sacral and so on and so forth. So we have 12, six and six. The crown is the only chakra where we don't have an archetype that is connected to or a planet when you're working in that fashion. And what happens is that when you're making that um, <clears throat> breath flow through you, okay, because it seems important, when you're using your breath and you're clearing the channel through your spine and letting your sacred fluid activate you, you know, celestial etheric energy, the mountain, ether energy. The flower that blooms out of the crown is one that is a reflection of whatever energy is in that chain, okay? And I, I just used the word chain. So there's something about letting go, furthering the letting go of certain karmic patterns related to others, maybe, um, wanted to be accepted I feel here you know because there's like I release others and to have their meaningful experience and you can have your meaningful experience so there's something here about um, knowing that sometimes you know roads just take different ways there's something about parting ways or being able to just follow your own road and your own rhythm <clears throat> There's a lot of throat here. What's going on with the throat? Yeah, trying to see. We're, we're going to see. There's something here in the subconscious. Let's see. I can feel it's there. Oh, wow. The king of fire. Interesting, because the king of fire in the zodiac is Sagittarius. Okay, and that's something that connects you to the pericardium organ, the, the, the meridian Sagittarius. And that's the one muscle that helps the heart to expand and retract and expand. So there's something about breath work for this pile that is going to give you access to deeper parts of your soul. Okay, so the mirror is saying, you know, let go and release what others are doing and what you feel others should be doing or how you should be doing things like others do you okay through your breath through breath work you're going to find the a fearless brave version of yourself that is connected to your higher self and here it's almost like your higher self from above but especially the light that is deep within you Okay, let's see, what was that card? Ooh, I celebrate my lineage and honor my ancestors. Some of you here, pile number three, there's definitely um, some deep connection to your family ancestry or lineage. There's something that you came to maybe release as part of those chains. Uh, you could have in your astrology chart, you could have fourth house placement. I would suggest that if you do have fourth pl uh, house placement, those planets, go and check out those pick a card readings. So for example, if you have, uh, you know, your Mars in that placement, go check out uh, whatever Mars uh, channel message is there. If you have another planet, go and check out um, those placement, those transit, because there's something here that you're able to release, because here it's the lineage, you're honoring it. There is some deeper lessons 
but there's also the freedom from you expressing in your own unique way some of that lineage, some of those gifts, some of that wisdom. Yeah, could be something in the family uh, that needs to be released. You see how this is kind of like going into a, a pyramid. Okay, I really feel that there's something we're channeling here um, as far as a spiral, something with the breath here. Okay, there is no blame. Okay, some of you, if there was any type of blaming in the family, the mirror of your soul wants you to also realize, could there have been, you know, if someone is saying like, oh, because of you, this and this and this, maybe they're carrying a lot of blame. Maybe they're carrying a lot of shame. Maybe they're carrying some guilt. Okay, so it's it's saying, watch your environment here, um, pile number three, as far as what is mirrored in other people's reaction to you taking your certain path, your sacred path, following your sacred wisdom, and not taking things personally. There might be a lot of projection that occurred in your life, and really honoring and harnessing what's yours and letting go of the rest. Proper rest helps me feel and look my best. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised through this transit that you would get a lot of messages through, um, through your subconscious at night. This is also another confirmation if you want to check out messages from your moon placement, okay? There could be some messages here aligned from the mirror of your soul as far as uh, some of the projection if you check the uh, archetype of your moon placement. I'm going to suggest for you, my dear pile number three, the surrender is the portal, okay? And you'll see for uh, all the videos that I'm linking there's also the law of attraction because i really feel that there could have been some confusion with maybe for example parents grandparents projecting certain desires onto you and you having to feel like you have to fight uh against <laughs> i heard the system and really the ecosystem you know um that could have progressed into a uh, school system, medical system, government system, but there's something that this ecosystem lives inside you. So there is some deep guidance about the ecosystem within your cells. Wow, I did not expect. This is why I was feeling a lot of nature and we're going to go deep dive even deeper now that we figure it out what needs to be released. Once you release the blame, once you release the projection, once you release everything that has been projected on you, we're going to deep dive onto the messages that your inner world needs and wants to address. Okay, so here we're going to see what Mother Isis as a mother archetype, a goddess archetype that wants to nurture, wants to suggest as far as your ecosystem Okay, the scarab energy here, beautiful symbol that speak, oh, wow. speaks of life being restored. Spiritual resurrection is gifted to you now. Whatever part of you or your life you thought to be dead is being revived and will flourish back into life. Just as the phoenix rises from the fire, transitioning from death into life, so too Will you rise again, healed and renewed? Wow, so Scorpio season, there's a lot of renewal of your truest self once you realize how the mirror of others has affected maybe your life. And I would say even when, when I'm connected to the rhythm of your life, maybe there's certain life events, a certain time of your life, certain age, uh, where you remember it very precisely when you took a certain road, a certain fork. Life is being restored 
within and what I'm feeling here, especially with this strong fire, the more you connect to your breath, the more you can tap within that deep mirror within, okay, the source that is yours within your cells. Okay, let's see what else we're getting as a spiritual guidance here to restore life for you, my dear pile number three. I would suggest again uh, to go, if you have access to the YouTube star membership, um, the void frequency that helps tapping into the vortex. Uh, it's a frequency I created for all those moments where we are being reborn. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. All right. I feel there's a reorganization. There might be a reorganization of your life that occurs through... Um, through this transition here, let's see, we have union and we have faith, beautiful, uh, major energy. So have faith in how you're going to be called to merge all of your wisdom because union and especially highlighting the Kundalini line Okay, the more you use your breath, the more you tap into the depth of your essence, the more you're going to see that flower, that expression of your crown, that expression of your true self, that expression of your truest path to emerge. Have faith in the process, have faith in whatever you've already lived and experienced as this activation is blessed and divinely timed. I really feel like with this um, butterfly that you may have gone through, especially uh, since Virgo season, this emergence um, that has been, you know, flowing through this, this, this call to renew some aspect of yourself. Maybe some of you, that's something you want to review is um, I'm going to, I'm going to list it. The sun, sun in Virgo. Um, might be something here for you pile uh, number three and some of you if you want support with cosmic alignment breath work deepening your connection to those meridian those lines of energy I strongly suggest you join us into that YouTube uh, starseed rise up movement where I'm doing the cosmic energy sessions and I align I allow you to kind of find um, your personal messages here. There's something about you that is going to shine through. You're going to see an aspect of yourself. Can we have, can we have deeper messages? What is this aspect of pile number three that wants to be reborn? There's something deep inside you that the mirror in here was almost like shoved down, you know? Let's see. Whoa. My dreams reveal that magic is real and anything is possible. You could have very ancient, you see here, shaman uh, dreams, dreams, sleep. Some of you, you could be strongly connected to the power of manifestation through your imagination, through your visualization, speaking. Um, through your dreams, you might have an ancient version of you that speaks to you through your dreams. I would strongly, 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 strongly suggest <laughs> um, dream journaling. Definitely. There's something that wants to come through you, okay? And that's a mirror of what's inside you that wants to show you a certain expression of your life you know like it, there's a lot of third eye third eye third eye I saw it here third eye you see all those cards there's there's a higher version of the life that's been almost like shoved down because of all the others perception and maybe you have feeling that you have to defend yourself that didn't allow you to access some aspect of your deep connection to yourself Okay, so that's what I have for you, my dear pile number three. I trust those messages are supporting you. And if they did, please give it a thumbs up. It supports the channel to grow.
Namaste.